Does religion lead to social change? Why did capitalism first emerge in Northern Europe before Africa, China, India, any other part of the globe? Capitalism first emerged in Northern Europe. Max Weber argues it's because of religion. Religion led to that huge social change. It was the Protestant faith that led to the development of capitalism. This video is for A-level sociology students, first year university students, anyone who wants to know what did Max Weber say about religion? Let's find out. In the 1500s, the Protestant Reformation took place in Europe. This refers to the spread of Protestant ideas throughout Europe. Previously, religious thinking had been dominated by the Catholic Church. That was the only major faith. And from the 1500s onwards, we see Protestantism, the Protestant faith, challenging the Catholic teachings, challenging the Pope's authority in Europe. So the Protestant Reformation is the spread of the Protestant faith throughout Europe. Weber argues that it's the Protestant Reformation, and particularly the spread of a particular type of Protestantism known as Calvinism, which leads to the emergence of the spirit of capitalism, the attitudes and ideas that will lay the foundations for capitalism to emerge. So let's pick this apart. So Weber's book is called The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism. So I'm going to start with the spirit of capitalism. The spirit of capitalism refers to taking the money that you've earned in a business and constantly reinvesting it, constantly seeking higher and higher levels of profit. So constantly developing your business to earn as much profit and to reinvest that. That is the spirit of capitalism. Weber argues the Calvinist faith laid the foundations for the spirit of capitalism that I've just described to emerge. Calvinists believed what they could learn about God and what God had planned for them and how to be you know, good Christians came from the Bible and the key message they took from that was they should glorify God through their work. So their approach to life was very, very strict. They worked hard, they didn't enjoy luxuries. You wouldn't have seen luxuries in a Calvinist person's house. Everything they did was about hard work. So they'd be up early, working hard, working till late, reinvesting all their money in business because to some extent they believed they were glorifying God. You know, they were celebrating God through their work. Why did Calvinists follow this way of thinking so strictly? It's because they believed in a concept called predestination. They believed that before they were born, God had already decided who was going to heaven and who was going to hell. And therefore, they were extremely anxious. They had something called salvation anxiety. Salvation, salvation anxiety refers to them not knowing whether they were going to heaven or hell. You know, this sort of crippling fear about what was going to happen to them. So they were very, very anxious. They were very concerned. They believed that by being successful in business, it showed that God had chosen them, that they were one of the people who were going to be saved. They were going to go to heaven. And it took away some of their anxiety. Now, obviously, this contradicted their original belief. Prior to Calvinism, when the Catholic Church dominated Europe, Religious thinking suggested that if you wanted to serve God, if you had a calling or a vocation to serve God, you did that by giving up your life and going and living in a monastery as a, a nun or as a, a priest. So you gave up all your material possessions and that was what meant serving God. And you focused on the spiritual world. Now this is known as otherworldly asceticism. You're serving God by focusing on the other world, which is the spiritual world. So you would have spent all your life in prayer, you would have spent all your time doing religious activities. You wouldn't have spent any of your time enjoying pleasurable activities, you know, earning money, etc. So otherworldly asceticism refers to serving God by giving up the material world, the everyday world, and focusing on the spiritual world through prayer and other religious activities. So Weber argues Calvinism is best described and introduces the idea of this worldly asceticism. People who have a calling to serve God do it by being successful in this world. And what we mean by that is by glorifying God through their success at work, by working hard and going through all the measures that we've talked about. So you've got this contrast between otherworldly asceticism, religions where people go away and they give up the world and they focus on the spiritual world, the other world, they spend all their time in prayer, they give up all their possessions. And this worldly asceticism, which Weber uses to describe Calvinists, where 
they glorify God through their success in this life. Weber doesn't say that it's just because of Calvinism, it's just one factor. You needed the ideas to generate the change, but other things would have been important as well. Having things like natural resources, a system of law and order, um, a system of money, and various other factors. So it wasn't the only thing, but it's what takes those factors and drives it on. So for example, Weber looks at other countries and highlights the reasons why they didn't emerge as capitalist, uh, as capitalist countries. So for example, India. India was materially more advanced than Europe. You know, it had all the things I just described, yet capitalism doesn't emerge there because Hinduism, the dominant religion in India, at the time in the 1500s promoted otherworldly asceticism to be a good Hindu you gave up your material life you went away you focused on otherworldly asceticism so that would have been through giving up your possessions and focusing on meditation prayer religious activities so the reason capitalism doesn't emerge in India is because of the religious ideas and values aren't ones which are going to cause people to desire endless pursuit of profit. It's Calvinism, which does that in Northern Europe, which lays the foundations for capitalism. So Weber argues the reason capitalism first emerged in Northern Europe was because Calvinist ideas had already dominated those societies and there was a, there was a similarity and affinity between them. He's not saying that the Calvinist faith, you know, people went to church and they were told to go out and earn more money. It's something they unconsciously did. So there's an unconscious link between the spirit of capitalism and the Calvinist faith. Now, this has two effects. Firstly, it provides psychological comfort to Calvinists. Obviously, we've said they've got this salvation anxiety, concern about whether they're going to heaven or hell. And by being successful in work, they feel like they're more likely to go to heaven. So they put all of their efforts, all of their time, they reinvested everything into work. So it provided a psychological comfort to them. Secondly, as we've said, it laid the foundations for the emergence of capitalism because people's ideas, thinkings, belief systems that had emerged from the Calvinist faith were very similar to the ideas, beliefs, and attitudes that would lead to the development of capitalism. <laughs> The easiest criticism we can make of Weber is that he was incorrect to suggest that capitalism first emerged in Northern Europe. A lot of other historians would argue capitalism actually emerged in Italy in the 1400s, so a long time before the Protestant Reformation, before Calvinism. The second criticism is that actually other factors are more important. So various different sociologists, historians have highlighted different ones. Tawney argues that technological factors are actually more important. If a country is technologically advanced, capitalism was able to develop. Other sociologists, historians have said actually the gaps between different countries are more down to literacy levels. You know, how many people in a country could read and write? And if they could, then capitalism was more likely to develop if they had an educated workforce. Another criticism is Scotland. Scotland was a very Calvinist country, but capitalism didn't emerge there as quickly as it did in England. People who believe in Weber's thesis would argue back. They would say, well, that's because Scotland had historic underinvestment. You know, it didn't have the natural resources or the wealth to develop capitalism as quickly as England did. Well done for listening. To answer a question in the A-level sociology exam on religion and social change, you need to watch the two videos. I've linked them in the description. I'll put links at the end of the video that will complete all the knowledge that you need. If you found this video helpful, hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss any more of these videos. Take care, any questions, pop them in the comments.